Okay. Right. Okay, so um, we were looking at prophecy, um, and we were also looking at uh, you know uh, the, the the process of perceiving. Right now, really, you know, uh, we're just breaking it down into uh, in a simple way so we can understand. Um, you know, we can learn. Right? It's it's only for that purpose, right? Um, but we know that uh, you know, or, uh, just to for us to. Uh, know and understand that God speaks, that God communicates, right? And he does in amazing ways. Um, so, you know, when we say, you know, I, God spoke, to, when, you know, you hear sometimes people say, you know, God spoke to me today, God spoke this. Um, sometimes we, you know, we kind of cancel it out, you know, how can God speak like that? You know, unless, you know, when people share a word, then you say, okay, this is what God has spoken. But then if there's anything else, any other, like, typical everyday information, then we sometimes, you know, our rational mind begins to work and, you know, that way and they say, how can, how can that happen? I know, how can God to direct you to choose what color, of, uh, you know, to what color outfit to wear, etc. But the fact is that God, God does speak, God is, you know, so involved in our lives. Okay, so the uh, process of perceiving. The third one is to, third uh, uh, step rather is to prophesy. Okay, so we maybe it's for someone else. We share it. Maybe um, okay. So here's a this was Priya saying again. I got reminded of Isaiah 43 about the river. Okay, yeah, maybe there's something to it, Priya. So you can just pray through. Uh, maybe it's for you. Maybe it's for someone else. You can you know just pray and pray through that. Wow. Okay. Right. So. Uh, so we can, you know, uh, you can speak it out, you can share that. Um, you know, if if there's nothing specific, you know, receive, right? If you felt that, okay, you just prayed and, okay, you just prayed about something and there's no specific instructions, that's fine. You know, maybe just God just wants you to just pray and be in his presence. That's That's absolutely okay, you know. Um, so, but understand that God is a God who, communicates and sometimes even as uh, you know even as reassuring comforting presence and silence is is a message by itself right so I mean, maybe you just sense the presence of god but no nothing more than that nothing more beyond that now now that's that's a message itself right he's just communicating that he's there he's communicating that he's with you right okay Okay, so um, then you know people do uh, have this thing, you know, like uh, sorry, question, you know, why does God do this? You know, why can't He just speak, like how you are speaking to me and how I'm speaking to you? Why can't He just speak? Well, the truth is that He does that. He does speak. Right? He chooses to speak that way. Um, uh, in audible, in an audible manner, and uh, he, cho he chooses to do that. And maybe some of you have, you know, uh, heard the voice of God in that sense, in that manner. So he chooses to do that. But we see in Scripture that God chooses to speak in all these other ways as well. Right now, you know, why symbolic things? You know, why in a dream? Or a dream I can understand, right? It's uh, you. You have no control over it, and you know you're you're asleep, and you're just receiving information, right? Um, you 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 can't choose not to not to dream, or you can't choose not to receive that um, whatever message God is putting in your heart. So, so it's you know God chooses to do that. Um, but why you know why is something symbolic? Why is something so abstract, right? The fact is that uh, I was just, this is just my opinion. The fact is that you get to engage with God again, right? Um, well, you get to go and ask Him again. We get to spend more time with Him, and uh, and God wants that. Okay, um, God loves that. The fact that you know we can go back to Him, spend time with Him, engage with Him, and say, God, you know, this is what I'm. What is it that you want me to do? What is it that and in that process, um, everything is getting changed within us. You know, our desires, 
our maybe selfish ambition, selfish desires, everything is just falling by the wayside. There is a, there is a changing, there is a molding, uh, that there is a shaping that is happening in our own lives, you know, where we are becoming more and more yielded to God and more and more, um, how should I say it, more and more um, wanting to perform, more, wanting to perform his will or wanting to carry out his will, right? Um, and so that, that happens as well, you know, as we spend time with God, we are being changed to be more like him, right? To be from glory to glory, like Second Corinthians 3.18 says that uh, by the spirit of God, you know, as we uh, take a glimpse of his glory, we are being changed from glory to glory, right? So that happens um, as well. So, so I just strongly, you know, feel that God wants us to engage. So these things come. And also, you know that there's a lot of information that God can just you know, download into our hearts with just a picture. Okay, I'm sure you know that saying a picture is worth a thousand words. A, a visual, it's, it speaks you know, a thousand. And it's easy to remember, recall, so some, you know, pictures. Um, so, yeah, those are some, you know, reasons why God chooses to speak in these ways. And he's... He's done it through the years. He's done it, you know, through these centuries. And he continues to do that um, to us as well, right? Okay, let's just get into the process of, you know, validating what we are receiving. Okay, now we're just going into the thing of discerning, validating. Okay. Um, first check, again, you know, we've seen this before, is to see, does it align? Is it in line with the Word of God? With a written, written word, right? Because that's our foundation. That's our reference point. Um, and since we know that God is the author, He's, you know, scriptures are God breathed or inspired by Him. So we can always check because what He has written will not contradict the way He is leading or will not contradict His will and desire. His, his will, His desire, His word are the same. Right, uh, the character and the nature of God does not contradict the word of God or the will of God, right? So it's one and the same. So one John five seven says uh, there are three that bear witness in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Right? So um, so a prophecy or you know something that is instructional, directional, will not uh, if it is something that is against the word of God or it inst the instruction comes to act in a way that is contrary to the nature and the character of God, then we can immediately discard it knowing fully well that that is not God. That is not God because he leads in paths of righteousness right? and uh, righteousness uh, uh, and holiness are his character. So he will not lead us in unrighteousness, uh, unrighteous manner. So we can discard it. The second thing is to also, you know, let's say we have something which is, uh, uh, well, which is, which aligns with the word of God, right? It's not, it's not immoral in any way. Like, for example, you saw, you know, some of these things that you saw, like right? river, light. Um, so it's, you know, it's kind of neutral in the sense it's, uh, you know, it's not immoral in any way. You saw the light, so how? Know, and is it in line with the word of God? Well, I guess, yes. Uh, you know, we, we see that God is light. In him, there's no darkness at all. So we know that scripture. And, but then, you know, what else? Was it me? Was it, you know, was it God? Right? So an, another uh, important check is to see, you know, is do I sense the presence of God, an anointing of God, uh, the peace of God when I'm receiving this? Right. When I think about this, when I, when I saw this light, is there any? Uh, do I sense the presence of God? Right? Do I sense His anointing? Do I sense His, uh, you know, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit? Do I sense anything like that at all? So this this is the second, you know, the second check. Then does it bring strength, encouragement, and comfort? Right? We see that it, prophecy does that. It brings edification. It brings. Um, encouragement it brings comfort um so you know uh, well we know that god would speak 
to us in order to warn us. He would speak in order to correct us, to uh, you know, to tell us that we are on the wrong path. We are maybe correct us of some um, you know wrongful habits or some decisions. So he would he would do that, right? Um, but it always God's instructions are redemptive. You know, even his corrections are redemptive. Right? It is with uh, you know with the, with a way out. No, this is what I want you to do, so that you can come back to me. Right? Even his warnings, you know, so that you know I want you to come back, and that's why I'm warning you. I want you to get back to me, and that's why I am correcting you. you know, it's, it's, ne it's never to put you down, destroy, uh, just break you into thousand pieces. No, God wants to bring us back. It's the restoration he, because He's a redemptive God. Like it's with you no know, redemptive is to take back like to the place from where you fell. So uh, if God's warnings and instructions are always redemptive, He wants you to come back. Even His commandments uh, to do. If you look at the commandments, right? Uh, don't do this. Why? Because He doesn't want us to fall and hurt ourselves and others in the bargain, right? Um, so they're redemptive in nature. So um, even in, in in terms of correction, you know, it, it is with that sense of strength and encouragement. Uh, so does it bring strength? Does it bring encouragement? Does it bring comfort? Okay. Um, then when as we pray and we, as we receive, uh, maybe, you know, some it's something, it's a message for others. Um, we need to check if we are, we have any prejudice or any bias okay so what do we mean by that you know that we prejudice is just that we come to a conclusion even before we have you know met that person or spoken to that person maybe just by looking at the person we we judge prior to this you know pre prejudice you know pre um, you know you, you kind of go through that process of um, coming to a conclusion even before you you know you've met or interacted with a person could be or you might have some bias right? bias would be like um, oh people speaking this language are always like that or people from this place are always like that you know, we could have that bias oh these guys from Tamil Nadu you know they are <laughs> always like this some bias and right? so we could we could have that or by their physical appearance you know they are dressed in a certain way. They're wearing some torn jeans and uh, have some weird body piercing and tattoos and all that. And so we we judge by that outward appearance. So this person can't be spiritual, or this person is definitely living in sin. Uh, you know, we we might come to that conclusion, right? So so if we have that, if we sense that, then then obviously uh, the message that God will share something, and then you know, it, even as we are sharing. It, we, it, we share with that bias, right? So we can, we need to check and see, okay, is my spirit clean? Is my heart clean, right? Do I have, do I harbor any such bias, any prejudice, mm, any uh, any kind of, uh, you know, hard-heartedness at all, you know, any kind of hurts really. Like for example, if, um, you know, let, let's say, uh, in a marriage that has gone wrong or in a marriage that's not really, um, you know, it's not a happy marriage, uh, the husband and the wife. And then, so if the, let's say the wife is one who's ministering and then the husband has not really been caring, not looking after responsibilities, etc. So the, if the wife gets to, let's say, minister and prophesy, uh, if she's not careful, then she could always deliver a very corrective, you know, um, a hard-edged, uh, corrective kind of a word, a condemning kind of a word for all men. He need to change. So the message could be, you know, God, God. Of course, the message could be shared in a loving manner, also, right? God loves you, and we wants you to. He's with you, but with this hurt, it can come, you know, with the it can come severely, and it can be a very condemning message, right? So. So that is something for us to um, for us to personally work on, you know, uh, when it comes to prophecy. Okay, um, how to deliver? You can speak it, you can pray it, sing it, write it, draw it, paint it, live it. Right, so many ways. So 
where you receive something from God and then maybe you know you're artistically inclined you can just go ahead and express it in a picture or you can just whatever you saw you you know uh, when when you were praying you, you just paint it out you and it can be a amazing prophetic a declaration right um or you can sing it you know uh, put it in a song sing it. it can be a prophetic song uh for that time then of course we can obey also right we see an instruction and then we carry it out um so other ways right you know you can pray through that it's going to be a prophetic intercession maybe god just wants you to pray about it is warning something uh, is saying something you know uh, um uh, about a person maybe on their journey that you know you see something uh, uh something bad happening then that's a warning for us to pray for god's protection over that you know it's not always like oh that is how what is going to happen something bad is going to happen no uh, the very fact that god has given that or given that uh dream is so that you can pray against that pray against that happening you know that's what um um god's protection right works that way that god has these intercessors and god is saying okay you pray and pray for, for protection for that person for this person right okay then the words we choose to communicate the message the tone of our voice and uh, when we when we actually deliver the message it's it's in our control okay so we don't have to be dramatic well if you want to be dramatic you can be um but we don't have to you know sound artificial right you don't have to put on a uh an accent or whatever it depends uh, it it is completely dependent on you because in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 31 32 says the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets right and uh, so which means that it's it's in your hands right how you want to say it what words you choose to say it right um it's in your hands right and the timing that is also Uh, our responsibility and uh, it's uh, the presentation uh, is as important as the revelation itself right so how you want to uh, when you want to actually present it when you want to share with that person or with that group um, is also in your hands right so uh, so we can choose like so let's say it's a very sensitive um sensitive information so you can choose not to kind of expose that person in public and you can choose to do that in private and say hey i sense that god is warning me warning you uh about this particular area and i believe that god loves you so much that he doesn't want to lose you so you need to change the way you live your life right and you can do that in in private rather than calling that person out and saying you know hey god is god knows what you're doing you better correct your life, yourself and that person is like feeling so embarrassed right there in public and well sometimes that might work also <laughs> but the thing is you know you that the timing is in your hands you're not you don't you're not called to destroy that person but really encourage and edify that person okay fourth one is you allow yourself to be judged Okay, like we said like we saw earlier we know that the gift is perfect we know that the message from god is perfect but as messengers we might have these prejudices we might have these biases we might have these hurts or uh, we might have uh, our own way of interpreting it right according to our flesh therefore the message might be might become contaminated right like i remember for example um, this um this prophet actually you know he's, he's he was a prophet and uh ministering is a god of prophetic ministry and and uh, there was this couple who were actually you know waiting on the lord for for a baby uh, for some time you know for some years and so this person prayed and uh, they were they were actually for many years they they were childless so this person prayed and, and god gave a encouraging word that they will have a baby uh, and so he Uh, in his excitement for the couple uh, so he just uh, you know uh, said god is blessing you with a with a boy baby 
Okay. So the thing is, uh, the gender of the baby was not something that was part of the prophecy, but then it just came out that way. He just, in his excitement, he said, uh, God is blessing you with a boy baby. And uh, and the baby was born. So the couple was very happy. Uh, but it just so happened that the, the baby was a girl baby, right? So the couple was happy, uh, nevertheless. So, but uh, the husband wrote back to the uh, to this man of God and said, you know, we we did receive uh, thank you for praying and God has answered your prayer and you know we have a beautiful baby and just wanted to let you know that it was not a boy baby that you, like you prophesied, but it was a girl, right? So just thought I'd let you know. So. Then the prophet actually wrote back and said, you know, I, I'm very sorry um, that I made this mistake because in now when I look back and reflect, I realize that in my excitement and in my, you know, in what I saw for you and uh, uh, I know that you had been childless for many years and then you had, you know, and then we prayed and in that excitement, I I just said, and I guess it's now when I look back, I see that it's, it's, it's me, you know, God didn't specifically... Uh, reveal uh, that it's going to be a, you know, a boy baby. I just made a mistake. Right? So he he accepted that. So the thing is to allow ourselves to be judged. Okay, when we give a prophetic word. Now, you know, simple words of uh, you know words of prophecy like uh, uh, something that strengthens, something that comforts, encourages. You know, we yes, you know, uh, unless it contradicts the word of God, we can always share. Right? Yeah, but even in those times, you know, we can allow ourselves to be judged as you know meaning you can first of all we we check you know and say okay god is it from you um or if you're not careful we can even say you know hey this is what i'm sensing this is what i'm seeing um so i'm not really sure so i just thought i should tell you this very safe way right you're allowing yourself to be judged uh, and you're you're giving that space for checking for that person to check, check with God, check with the word, and to come back and say, "Yeah, I think this was, uh, uh, this is this is right or this is wrong." Right? So uh, we do that. So, and also uh, it gives that uh, it is something very very scriptural. Right? We see uh, again in one Corinthians fourteen that a prophecy must be tested. Right? When you see in the in the new New Testament in the uh, in this new uh, dispensation that this is how it is, God, we have the scriptural instruction. Okay, so what is a litmus test for a prophet? Um, okay, there will be actually a very detailed thing in um, in the prophetic class, um, and also uh, there are several things about the you know test of the prophet. Of course, uh, one is by the fruit in the sense that it comes to pass. Um, secondly, you know the prophecy actually does not lead you. Um, the, the, the prophet and the um, the, uh, the prophecy does not lead you away from God, but towards God, right? So, so what's the point in when when something is prophesied and the, and the action of it leads you away from God? So, um, um, that is the thing. And in addition to you know all this, um, the the fruit of the the life of the prophet again, right? So, so these are some 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 things that are there. Uh, but there's a very detailed uh, study on it, you know, about the test of a prophet or to test and see, you know, is it is this person a prophet uh, for oneself? You know, it's it's a good test for ourselves. So you could you could check check that out, um, Divya. Uh, it's in uh, the book Understanding the Prophetic. Uh, so you can you can check that out, right? Okay. Um, okay. So uh, allow yourself to be judged. So don't be hurt, and that's you know. Suppose you say share something, and that person says no, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> so uh, you know, so then it's like, um, mm, uh, and you don't have to feel hurt. You, know, you maybe you made a mistake. Maybe you know, like sometimes it happens, right? You uh, you know, we uh, okay. I, I we strongly sense that this is this this is what is happening, and then we share in church. You, you know, in a in a public gathering and say, okay, is there anyone with this kind of a thing? You're going through this, and, and nobody nobody puts their hands up. And then, um, you know, you, you you suddenly you begin to doubt. You know, did I hear from God or not? But then that's fine, right? You you are um, 
Of course, we're all learning, growing in it. But many times we you see that, uh, you know, maybe people then lift their hands during the meeting, during the service. And then sometimes after the service, right, uh, they come back and say, yeah, pastor, you know, that was me. Uh, you know, maybe they were feeling embarrassed to put their hands up, whatever be the reason. Or maybe they were not, uh, you know, uh, so that whatever you know they they might uh, come back later also and do that but the thing is that um, you know we um, we allow ourselves to be judged right and uh, it's very very important okay um don't be too hasty to use thus says the lord okay which means um say uh, the lord is telling you this okay and especially when it comes to something directional the lord is saying that uh, by this time next year that you will you will be uh, working among you know this kind of people you know as we grow in the prophetic yes you know we know that uh, you know that, that there is a place for that like, there is a place for that but as we are growing uh, in the prophetic uh, let's not be hasty to use that let's not rush into it and say you know this is what god is saying or thus says the Lord, you know, saying because it comes with that seed of approval and authority, and and when normally when we do that, people it leaves no room for people to check, right? Hey, God Himself has spoken, and it's come from a very what do you call a well-respected, reputed person or a pastor or a minister of God, and you know who am I to check? Who am I to test? Right? So when we kind of put that person in a predicament, like we say, thus says the Lord, this is what God says. You need to do this or you should not do that. Right? So um, so the thing is, don't rush into that. Don't be hasty to use that. You know, always leave room uh, for the person to check and test. And, and we can, you know, um, we can use words like, you know, I this is what I sense in my spirit or... Um, this is what I feel the Lord is uh, putting in my heart. Right? So these are uh, kind of safer uh, and acceptable ways of, uh, more gracious ways of sharing, right? uh, which leaves room for the person to also to check and test and, and receive it and walk in it. Okay? Um, see, the thing is that we... 1 Corinthians 13 talks about how we receive in part and we prophesy in part. Now, it's not, we may not know the full, full history of that person, full life history of the person, because it's, it's a word, right? Uh, God gives us a word sometimes. So it's, it's, a, it's a small piece of information, really. Um, but we can be faithful and, and, and share that. Just because we share that word does not mean that we know everything Right, A to Z about the person. We do not, right? So we uh, we know in part and we prophesy in part. So uh, just be faithful to whatever we've received and go ahead and prophesy. Okay, so prophecy can also flow with the other gifts like gifts of healing or you know uh, other 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 gifts. So it's not in isolation. Uh, the responsibility is for us to. Uh, share you know clearly communicate clearly and in a very simple language so that the person can understand and also act on it right so if it's very very um it's unclear or if it's if you're using very complicated language then the person may not really understand what we are sharing and as a result of it they may not be able to even act on the message maybe if it if it needs to be you know acted upon Right. Um, so uh, simplicity and clarity always helps. Um, yeah, prophecy can be delivered to individuals, to a smaller group, to a large church gathering, or it can be like a a, a team that's prophesying to a, a person uh, or a group of people. You know, team one by one, just prophesying. It can be a. Uh, we've done some of those with our. You know, uh, when we gathered for worship team uh, meetings and a uh, really very encouraging time for people, right? Okay. So we can do uh, prophecy. We can can be released in all these uh, manners, no, in, in all these ways. Right? Sorry. So what are, what are some guidelines 
um, especially when we use it in smaller groups, right? Use it for edification, not for embarrassing people. Okay, it's never to bring the person down. It's never to destroy the person or to bring that person under condemnation. That's that's never God's heart, right? So so don't you do that. Um, you know, all can prophesy. Let everyone participate, everyone share, and everyone can learn and grow in it. Right? Um, and also, if there's one person who's leading, maybe there's a person who's leading the whole time of prophesying, just follow instructions and let there be order uh, when we do it. Okay, and uh, of course, allowing oneself to be judged and corrected um, is good. Okay, some uh, things to avoid. Don't try to be a fortune teller, you know, uh, telling people what they want to hear and in return for something, uh, you know, for some gain, personal gain. So, you know, well, maybe God has called you to be a prophet or a prophesying believer. And, you know, don't ever you know, do that. Um, also, prophesying, the gift of prophecies is never to, to be used to manipulate people. Right, to control people's lives, um, to control their behavior, to control their actions. It's never that. Right? Because um, witchcraft is what, uh, you know, that is. Because, you know, to manipulate people, to force people to uh, to also to, um, to kind of force them to for monetary gains or, uh, you know, to, uh, so the, for our own benefits and all that. That is... That is witchcraft, and it's not prophecy. So, uh, we should not get into that, right? And uh, uh, we need to test. We need to submit, um, and let it be for the person's edification, so that the spirit of God can lead them uh, into freedom and liberty, right? Okay. So, so that's about um, the gift of uh, prophecy. So, any questions, you know? Any questions on this? We can talk about it now. Okay. Okay. If you have questions, you can feel free to post them later as well. Okay. Let's look at uh, the next gift, which is the word of wisdom. Okay, so the word of wisdom, again, closely related, you know, verse, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, prophecy. Um, these three are very uh, closely related to one another, you know, gives that, reveals something, right? Um, so the word of wisdom is, uh, it's a piece of, again, God's wisdom. It's a, it's a word, right? a piece of information uh, from the Lord, right? It's, 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 it's uh, divine wisdom. It's from him. And it is supernaturally uh, communicated to the believer or imparted to the believer. The believer receives it. Right? It's not um, It's not something that I, it, that is learned. It's supernaturally received. So what is it used for? To solve a problem. To determine what course of action to take, you know, like what decision to be made, um, to also know what is coming up in future, and it could be to release some creative, scientific ideas, right? a word of wisdom. So we know that word is part of a, a long sentence. So it's a, it's it's a, it's a small piece of information. Uh, which is a, a, a part of God's vast and expansive and infinite wisdom. Right? It's just a small part of it. But it does the job. Right? When God c communicates that, it solves the problem. It is that which is used for, you know, useful for uh, maybe, you know, that maybe it's in a counseling kind of a situation. But that's the thing. That is the very information that, that brings that restoration back if, if carried on. If acted on, upon, right? So it's different from acquired wisdoms that we need to understand, right? And it's uh, uh, when we say wisdom that's acquired, it comes through experience. It's the ability to use knowledge, right? It's it comes from experience. It comes from you know uh, our going through a course or learning and trying it out. Um, so that's a naturally acquired 
wisdom. So, and that which is also important. We're not downplaying that in any way, right? So, God who has given us our mind and all this, um, you know, that we see around us. So, we use our minds to learn from it, research, and uh, so, which is important as well. But when we when we look specifically as word of wisdom, it's a supernaturally acquired, supernaturally imparted uh, wisdom, right? So it's regardless of my learning, it's regarded regardless of my, you know, my background, my understanding, uh, whatever, you know. So it could be a word of, it could be a specific instruction to do something, to share something, uh, which could solve a problem. Maybe it's to solve a financial problem. Maybe it's to solve a, you know, something else, maybe a technical problem, um, or it's a, maybe an idea, um, a creative idea that that really, uh, you know, enhances the beauty of something. And it would be, you know, the application could be varied. Um, but the thing is that, um, you know, it's not something that I, uh, that I acquired naturally. It's not from books. It's not from looking at videos, watching videos, or, uh, or attending a course, but something that God puts in my heart. Right. So, uh, some Old Testament examples we see Joseph interpreting dreams. Right? Joseph, uh, the Pharaoh's dream, he interpreted um, with the help of God. He, he knows that you know he uh, the interpretation comes from him, from God. God is the one who enabled him. Along with the interpretation, if you notice, uh, and especially when it came to Pharaoh's dream, those two dreams that he had uh, about the the cattle, the healthy cattle the ones which were skinny, and also about the corn. Um, there was also a solution that he provided, right? There was a wisdom that he provided in order to, uh, it, it was a solution that saved the nation. Right? What they should do during those years of famine, building granaries and collecting grain and a portion of it and storing it, uh, which helped them to overcome and to sustain them uh, uh, during the years of famine, right? So now that's a word of wisdom. And we studied about Bezalel, how the Holy Spirit gives create gave creative ability to him and others in his team to uh, in craftsmanship, in jewelry, and carvings, and so on. Right. So something. Uh, so ideas, creative ideas, coming from God, and be open to it. Uh, for David, King David. You know, uh, the Lord gave him the design for the temple, which later Solomon built. Right? So he was, well, of course, he he grew to be a king. Um, but he was really, uh, you know, he, he knew how he could to lead sheep. He was definitely a talented musician and a songwriter. And he was a warrior. But, but this was something that he didn't have any, you know, uh, experience in but the lord gave him uh, the the idea for a design and we read about it uh, in first chronicles 28 that he gave that temple design to david right um ezekiel we re read about some uh, uh, you know uh, some visitations and experiences encounters that he had uh, visions um daniel again interpreting dreams and also foretelling future events. So we see those such examples in the Old Testament. In the New Testament also, we see that, uh, you know, there was a warning like you and warning about not going back to Herod, to the wise men, right? Not going back to Herod, but to, but to go back to their own country after they visited uh, the Lord Jesus, right? After they visited Mary and Joseph and the Lord Jesus, um, we saw him in the stable and in the manger, and they went. Um, I'm sorry. When they actually came and saw, they were actually in the house. Right. The, uh, when the shepherds came, they were in the manger and the stable. When the wise men came, they were they are actually in a house. It says. So, um, so they saw they 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 saw that, and then uh, they received instruction, um, and they went a, a different way. Right. Joseph again. Dream, uh, he received that information uh, in a dream, right? not to go or to go to Egypt, not to stay, but to go to Egypt 
and to stay there and to come back also every time it was a it was that information which which helped you know say preserve life their own lives um the life of the lord jesus okay so we see several examples the lord jesus uh again uh when he was uh, you know they wanted to corner him and, and and put him in a spot about paying taxes they knew that uh, they they wanted to trap him um by their by their questionings their questioning was not genuine it was not like they wanted answers or solutions but you know they said okay uh, we want to know is it okay to pay taxes so if the lord said yes then the pharisees could say hey, he's supporting the romans if he said no then they could hand him over to the romans you know so it it was just to trap him but the lord jesus asked a very pertinent question you know whose image is there on the coin whose inscription is this and they said caesar's then and here's the wisdom with which he he answered or you know that particular situation in that situation he said therefore give to caesar what is caesar's and give to god what is god's and they 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 were just marveled at the wisdom with which he handled that situation so we see that uh paul you know some uh, direction about going to macedonia and how he has a dream um and so on okay so so we see that you know the word of wisdom both in the old testament and in, and in the new testament we see uh, that happening right so here's a list of how the word of wisdom operates and how it can be useful okay so now we as we go through this list you will realize that hey god actually has spoken to me in these ways before right i i knew i know that you know there have been times when god spoke to me like that and it was very very helpful okay you realize that we're just giving a name to it and saying okay word of wisdom the fact is that word of wisdom word of knowledge prophecy well it's all about god's communication and god speaking and god um you know instructing god leading it's, it's all about that which is um you know we're learning that that this can happen and we're giving it a name and it's i mean we're not, not we're not giving it a name i mean god has already given it a name it's there in scripture we're just understanding okay this is what it is this is how it applies so i can expect i can be open for god to lead me in these ways for the holy spirit to lead me in these ways right okay so when it comes to come you know let's say counseling people and helping identify certain deep issues and the causes right we see the symptoms of it we see people saying you know outwardly speaking certain things but then uh and they're saying okay this is maybe this is this could be the reason you know we are always have and it's because of this behavior or it's because of that but then there could be a deeper issue and the holy spirit who knows the hearts of people can reveal that to the one who is counseling and and that piece of information is very very important because that's the missing piece right this whole thing that's the missing piece in the picture so if i am sensitive enough to receive that right and share that and say well i just believe that this is this is what god is uh showing or this is this is something is it so you know is this the, have you been doing this or you know have you been behaving in this manner or is this something that you have in your in your house then you know we we identify and that root cause is identified and once that is dealt with then the whole situation changes scenario changes right so it could be counseling it could be um in during the ministry of the word itself you know what kind of word to share what is the word that one needs to share and how to communicate that right uh interpreting dreams we saw that um solving business workplace problems also you know so the thing is that god is um god wants to do that in our lives right maybe you could be in you maybe you're a student you could be um you know you you could have your own business maybe you're a working professional um even that right it's not outside of god's scope you know it's not just about church or in church or you know matters related to 
what we think are related to you know things of the word and spirit and uh, spiritual in nature it's not just that right god wants to deal with and solve things in the birth, uh, in the workplace when it comes to you know the business that you're handling and believe god for that right? believe god for ideas okay um lord how can i really solve this issue of um, you know of debt how can i solve this whole challenge of um, uh you know entering into other new markets right or lord give me some ideas for uh, a product or a service that will really enhance the business god can do that and god will communicate that a word of wisdom okay uh solutions for difficult life situations um uh, dealing about the future design in any field um again i just wanted to share uh, you know it can be in any field you know it can be in music it can be like uh, you know like i some of you know right i lead worship and this was for one of the one of the sunday morning uh, services we were having a like an evangelistic um, service we used to call it big sunday and and i really wanted to know uh, like how do i start this particular this particular song i didn't want to sing it the usual way um so usual way in the sense you know there's an inter in, there's an intro there's a musical intro and then we sing with the, we start with the first verse so i didn't want to do that because i felt that okay it may not be relevant for the audience which will be a mixed crowd of believers you know uh, people who do not believe oh. um so lord how do i how do i start that and uh, and i just prayed about it and as i woke up that morning sunday morning i just woke up with singing that section right singing that section and i just knew in my heart yes god had answered the prayer right this is what i'm supposed to start with so i was not singing the verse i was not singing the chorus um when i woke up singing that that bridge uh, uh of that song the bridge of that song and and that and those words really made sense that yeah this can this can be something that can be encouraging uh to you know, both kinds of you know both audiences it can be for the believer and for the unbeliever and and so on so um so any uh, you know any field you know, that you are in and what you are engaging in well that word of wisdom like right, god god gives that that inspiration and that information and you, and you take that and you go with it and you see that that solves the problem or that enhances um uh, you know the effectiveness of the whole thing right okay so how is the word of wisdom received again we come come back to that you know what good is that if i don't know how to receive it when i know that god does this god does it in the past, did it in the past in the old testament i see these examples god does it in the new testament i see these examples but then how do i receive it same way same manner being sensitive in our spiritual senses okay so there can be a quickening of scripture like we saw that you know divya shared that shared a, a couple of scriptures priya uh, i think you shared uh, 43 2 right um, yeah you shared that so um, so it can be a quickening of scripture you know so you sense that okay uh, you know a, a scripture verse comes to your heart at that moment it's not something that you've been reading but you something obviously something that you've read before um but that kind of comes to your that comes to your heart and you make a note of it sometimes you do you just get a reference you don't know even know what the verse is till you open the bible and read that reference out or maybe sometimes it's a entire scripture itself um and uh, a quickening of scripture to your heart uh, is one way by which you receive that word of wisdom okay um and there could be a sense of knowing on the inside what is that you know it's a it's a growing um weight it's a, you know it's like you know that you know that you know that this is what you're supposed to do right this is what your your next action should be okay i actually i should know, go there i should do this um okay so what we'll do is we'll continue this uh next class uh there's a bit more to share about uh word of wisdom so um, let's take some time to do that and probably we'll just go a little bit faster 
from the next class onwards, right? Uh, about covering, and then we'll cover the rest of the gifts as well. Um, okay, so we'll stop here. Okay, thank you so much. God bless you guys. Uh, we'll catch up next week. Bye-bye.